In this lesson, we're going to be discussing creating a 2D sketch. This is going to be more of an exercise than a lesson, so I highly encourage you to follow along as I go through this exercise. So let's get started. This is what we're going to create. What I'm going to do is go ahead and start a new drawing and recreate this for you. Go to the New button, select the standard IPT, select Create, brings up a blank part, Create 2D Sketch, I'm going to select my base plane. Now to make it easier for you, I'm going to actually show the two drawings side by side as I go along so that you can see it on my screen. Make this one just a hair bit bigger so you can see it as we go through it. Go back over here to the sketch. As I discussed in basic sketching techniques video, it's very important to get the design intent of your drawing, not necessarily draw it out as we go along. This is what the finished sketch is going to look like, but it doesn't have to start looking like this. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to select the line command. I'm going to start out by drawing one of the legs here. When I first start drawing, I do let the automatic constraints imply a constraint. Maybe two here. But as I start getting more and more lines, it starts getting further away from my design intent. If I don't like that constraint, I can change it. If I come over and I rub on this line right here, it will say, hey, that's an important line. And so now instead of being parallel to the bottom line, it knows I want it to be perpendicular to this line. As I go, if it gets too far out of whack here, I'll hold down control and I'll just manually sketch it out and I'll go back and fix it after the fact. You can see I'm getting the very, very basic shape down, but it's not exact. Those of you who are used to using direct input with AutoCAD, this is very hard to get used to. One of the things that I do is I actually adjust the shape and size of my design so that I know I need to manually come back and edit it. I assume if I see a perfectly perpendicular or parallel line that Inventor's already added the constraints I need. So I will actually create something that looks a little bit Frankenstein-ish so that I know as a mental note to myself that I need to come back and finish editing the sketch. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line just a Perpendicular to that bottom foot's fine. Straight up. Hit escape. And I'm going to select the line. See it blue highlighted there? Tell me it's selected. I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to tell it that that's going to be the center line. We have center line, construction line, center point, and driven dimension. Talk about the center line and construction line here real quick. Center line is exactly what it says. Tells it that it's going to be the center line of what I'm going to be doing, whether it be symmetrical or whether it be a revolve or something like that. And then the construction line allows me to come up, turn that on, and then the geometry will be added to my sketch, and I can dimension from it. I can use it to control other objects. I can offset it. But it's not going to show up in the finished part. This is very important for axes and centers of circles. And then whenever you get into measuring some very odd objects, it comes in very handy to use these tools. I have my center line in here now. First thing I'm going to do is constrain my center line using the coincide and constraint. Select on my line and then select on my little origin point there. And you can see that it's held to that origin point. Next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is hit the vertical constraint and lock that down vertically. You can see it turned black telling me that that line cannot move vertical or rotate around that point. Can still move it up and down, but I can't move it left and right. Then I'm going to come in here and use the symmetrical constraint. Start locking it down based on that center point. Down in my bottom left hand corner, you can see the command line there or the status bar is asking me what to do next. This is a great tool to be able to understand what step to take next. Once you start adding symmetrical constraints, if Inventor goes wacky on you and gives you a Jackson Pollock looking design, best thing to do in an initial sketch like this is to undo. We can go to the next symmetrical constraint. Say this outer line here, inner lines, 
to the feet. And I can start giving it some of this intelligence. See, and it worked fine that time whenever I did the inner because I was able to constrain it with the other constraints first. Your order that you add your constraints do matter. Sometimes it's trial and error figuring out which one needs to go first and which one needs to go second. Rule of thumb is to control the largest geometry first and then work your way to the smaller stuff because the larger stuff's going to drive more features. Next thing I'm going to do is come in here and tell it to be perpendicular here. It's going to lock that down. Say collinear on this top one. Collinear on the top of these legs. Hey, we're already there. We don't need that. It's giving me this warning telling me that adding this constraint will over constrain this sketch. That's fine. So now I believe I have a very nicely geometrically constrained sketch. Can hit F8. And as I said in previous lessons, it gets very overwhelming very quickly with these constraints. This is why you have to use them sparingly and be careful with what you choose. Because it can take a long time to figure out what's causing a problem with these so many different constraints. If I hit F9 to turn it back off again, and I add one more here just to kind of finish it up there. So now I'm going to start adding dimensional constraints. As I just said, the rule of thumb with any kind of constraint is do the largest one first. So we're going to say this part's four inches tall. And we're going to zoom out so we can see it. We're going to say that this leg is 0.375. And then we're going to say that this leg up here is equal to the bottom leg. All I have to do is select that dimension. And that'll be 0.375 as well. Select the center bar. So now they're all 0.375. Select this leg here, 2.5. I can select the little foot out here, one inch. And select the bottom leg to the center point. This dimension here is to the origin point here. And that's going to be 0.75. And one last here, say so this is going to be two inches wide. And now the sketch is fully constrained. You will notice there are two more dimensions here to really make it fully constrained. And that's to dimension my construction geometry. I can come in here and fully constrain this. Just if I want to really be anal about it and make sure that I get everything perfect but I don't have to. Reference and center lines don't have to be fully constrained. It's a good idea to at least lock them down, but you don't necessarily have to fully constrain them. When you're finished, your sketch should look something similar to this. If you have dimensions overlapping, it's very easy to manipulate them just so they look nicer. We are not going to see these dimensions once we turn them into features. We will, however, be able to use them in the drawing environment later on down the road. I like to try to make my sketches look as nice as possible whenever possible. This is not necessarily going to happen when you get into a production environment and you're in a hurry, but if you ever need to come back and edit this sketch down the road, if it's nice and clean and easy to see, it's going to make it much easier to edit. You should have something like this. Let's go up and hit save. And you're going to notice that it's going to tell me, hey, you can't save this in sketch mode. That's fine. You actually have to return out to the part mode environment to save. Sketches are not eligible to save. For my purposes here, I'm going to save this as O2, O2, creating 2D sketches. And save. Now you have a nice, 2D sketch that you've created.